So last year, Wesley and I were in Portugal, and we were with this young apostolic leader named Rodriguez. He's a great guy, and he has an apostolic center with like a business center in it, and he's, you know, reaching the youth. And he used to be a professional soccer player, but his father made him quit professional soccer and go to university. So he went to university and actually became, before he was a pastor, a university professor teaching sports management in Lisbon. That is important for a, the part of the story that's coming. And um, he, he has rarely heard the audible voice of God in his life. But last January, like not, not 2023, but January 2022, he was just minding his own business and he heard the audible voice of God. And the voice said, go and rent the stadium. And he, he, he knew it was the voice of the Lord, but he kind of talked himself out of it. Have you ever, like, heard God and talked yourself down uh, from doing something crazy? He said, Lord, I, you know, I, I only have, you know, a few hundred people in my church and a few thousand people in my network. And the stadium seats 65,000 people. And not only that, uh, you know, it costs a lot of money. And, 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 and so he kind of ignored it for a week. And a week later, he heard the voice again, go and rent the stadium. So he make, dials up the stadium, makes an appointment with the, the manager. He gets in there. And when he gets in there, the manager told him this. He said, no, we don't rent to Christian events. This is a soccer stadium. It's called Benfica. It's stadium of light. Ding, 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 ding. Anyway, so uh, the, it's one of the newest state, stadiums in uh, uh, Europe, and it's got all this high-tech stuff on it. And he said, we don't rent to, you know, he told him the vision, I want to host a Christian event. Oh, no, we don't rent to religious organizations, although I found out since that they rented to the Jehovah Witnesses before. Uh, and, uh, and so he's telling him, no, it's just impossible. We don't do that. And as he's <clears throat> talking to him in the office, uh, the, the, his boss walks by. And when his boss walks by, he turns in and he goes, Rodriguez! And he gives him a big hug. And he had happened to be one of Rodriguez's students 15 years before when he taught in the university. <clears throat> and so he said, what are you doing here? And Rodriguez said, well, I have this vision because Portugal sent, now it depends if you're Spanish or Portuguese, but I'm going to go with the Portuguese for this story, uh, that, you know, out from the port of Lisbon, uh, uh, Columbus set sail from the port of Lisbon, and they have this big stature in the plaza of Lisbon uh, with, with, uh, with a boat and all the people that were in the boat, and took the gospel to the nations of the world. So North America, South America, and Marco Polo went through that, through that, that port and took the gospel to Asia and all these, because the Portuguese were the largest ship sending people in that era at that time. You must be Portuguese. Sorry, I can't see you, but uh, no, anyway, she's loving it. Uh, 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 that the Portuguese did this. So anyway, so he said, so my vision is that we took the gospel to the ends of the earth. We'll hold a stadium event because the Lord didn't tell him why he wanted him to rent the stadium. So he thought of this and, and we'll bring all the nations of the world back to as a Thanksgiving offering to thank the Portuguese for sending the gospel to the world. And, uh, and so he told this guy the vision and the boss of the guy that told him no said, that's a great idea. We'll let you rent it. And, you know, here's the payment plan. Go for it. With, uh, and I'll do anything I can to help you, Rodriguez. So he's been praying about this vision. So it was supposed to be set for June 2024. And because Portugal is a largely Catholic nation, like 90-some percent Catholic, Rodriguez felt that he wanted to actually include Catholics as part of this because it was Catholics that sent the gospel out. And so he made an appointment to go see Father Renero Cantala Mesa. Now, Father Renero is now Cardinal Renero, was, is the Pope's preacher. And years before, he had been in a stadium in, in 1977 in Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. It was the height 
of the charismatic renewal that was impacting the Lutherans, it was impacting the Catholics, it was impacting the Baptists, and the Holy Spirit was filling his people in a fresh outpouring back in that hour. And so Jesse Duplantis and a whole bunch of other leaders at the time gathered this event in Arrowhead Stadium in 1977. Father Renero Cantela Mesa happened to be in that stadium. And in that stadium, he, he, he was already a priest, but he became a real disciple of Jesus. And he got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And he went back to Europe, after which John Paul II called him up and asked him to be his pre preacher. The Pope gets to choose his own preacher, and there's only one person in the whole world who can preach to the Pope, and that's the Pope's preacher. None of the other cardinals or anybody are allowed. It's only this guy that can do sermons. So, so, so we, you can see what the Lord is doing, okay? After John Paul II died, Benedict asked him to be his preacher. And after Benedict resigned, Francis asked him to be his preacher. So... Uh, Rodriguez knew him and, and, the, and Father R Cardinal Renero asked him, well, why don't you come and visit me? Because he's old now. He's 89 years old. Why don't you come and visit me? And Rodriguez told him the vision of the stadium. And when he told him the vision of the stadium, the first response of, of, the, of uh, Father uh, Cancela Mesa was, why don't you move the stadium up a year? and move it because World Catholic Youth Days are coming to Lisbon, Portugal. We are expecting 1.5 million, mostly young people. Come on, the beginning of the youth harvest. Mostly young people to descend in Lisbon, Portugal. And when they descend, we have all kinds of events. But why don't you put the stadium event in the middle of it? And you guys can all run it the way you do. You can preach the God, good news. You can create in the language of the Catholic Church missionary disciples. You know, tell them. And, and they can, and he said, you can preach the gospel. You can bring the evangelists. And then you can fill them, get them all baptized in the Holy Spirit. Come on. Jesus. Jesus! I think... Okay, now, you got to catch the storyline here. There's something bigger going on. So, so, and so I was telling a group that I have, uh, it's a, it's a, a group that we've, I've walked with for 20 years, different leaders of the body of Christ, evangelicals and Pentecostals and charismatic Catholics. And, uh, I was telling them all on the phone, this exciting development. And this one guy reaches out to me, texts me after the phone call and said, Stacy, I, I haven't met you yet, but I loved your story. And you know, I, can I talk to you? So he phones me up, uh, or I phone him, I forget which, and his name is Henry Capella. And so we're seeing, like, like only God can do to weave a storyline with a storyline with a storyline. And this Henry Capella had, was raised on the Isle of Malta. When he was 21 years old, a group of YWAMers came to Malta, preached the gospel, he got born again, and he began to work with YWAM for the next five years and doing evangelism. And he, he, and he, you know, worked, he was Catholic and he worked within the Catholic church just doing evangelism. And he said, after five years, the YWAMers thought that they should plant this struggling little Pentecostal church. And he said, why are you doing that? If you plant a church to be, become a church planting movement, you'll lose all your evangelism and discipleship and, and partnership with the churches that you have created. It'll suddenly become a division. And so he said that the, out of the whole discussion, Lauren Cunningham flew to Malta 30 years ago. They had a big discussion about it. And Lauren Cunningham made the executive decision that YWAM would stick in its lane with evangelism and discipleship and working with all the churches. So this guy has happily stayed in the Catholic Church, done all kinds of evangelistic initiatives and, and is, you know, a, a, a great, great guy. And he phones me up and he said, Stacy. I have been working on a plan, 
I said, what's the plan? He said, God gave me this idea that we, from 2023 to 2033, it's the last decade that we would launch, we would gather all the evangelistic movements that we can from uh, from every stream of the body of Christ that is preaching the gospel with signs and you know filling people with the Holy Spirit. We would gather them all together and uh, uh, call it Global 2033 and launch a decade of evangelism, the last decade before the 2,000 year anniversary of the death and resurrection of Jesus. And I said, wow, big plan, that's awesome. And he said, and I said, why don't you come to the stadium and launch the decade of evangelism with that and bring all the evangelists? He said, I have over 120 presidents and vice presidents, like that president of Crew, Campus Crusade for Christ, Billy Wilson, the president of ORU and the Pentecostal Assemblies, uh, Nikki Gumbel, the head of Alpha and Alpha for Catholics. And he started listing off all these huge evangelistic ministries that are all collaborating collaborating together with one voice to preach the gospel so that Jesus' prayers are answered. 